what is up my name is Sven and today a new base build video this time I'm gonna show you guys the shell v3 this base is the third version of the shell bases that I have designed and so if you haven't seen the v1 or the v2 I would really recommend you to watch those first now what is different in the v3 compared to the v2 and the v1 most importantly is that this base is designed to have two TC's two main TC's. The way it works is the core 3x3 has its own TC and the rest of the base is built around and on top of it with another TC. When raiders would raid this base online or offline it's basically impossible to get building privilege. Of course this goes if you build the base right and if you code lock all your TC's. Now this base has a shell and so from the top you won't really recognize that there's a 3x3 on the inside. Next to having two main TC's some new unique things that I've applied in this design are the new external TC towers that I have with turrets on top that basically control your roof and make it so that no one can basically land or get on top of your roof. Next to that, this base has a double layer of inner peak downs. It is perfectly made for a group that has the size of eight people. And all of those eight people have three respawns each, one on the shooting floor, one on the inner peaks, and one on the main loot room. The main loot room of this base is not in the tree tree. It is actually on top, hidden below the shooting floor. And in this particular design, we have also half walled the top of the base to prevent top-down raids. Now that is basically it for the general info. Another thing that I have to say with this base is that it is expensive to build and it is expensive to upkeep as it is purely made to defend online raids with as an eight-man group on an active wipe. It is not strong against offline raids and if you're looking for a base that's strong against offline raids it is definitely not recommended to build this base another quick thing i've seen in the previous video is that people complained about the base being too expensive and once again i would like to remind all of you that i'm purely showing you guys these bases because i built them myself in actual wipes and so for some bases you just need a bigger more active group than for others i'm sorry if the base is too expensive for you but i will definitely be focusing on smaller type of bases as well in the near future now allow me to give you guys a tour of the base all right so before we jump into building this base let me give you guys a tour and let's talk a little bit about the base what the features are and what you can expect now it is a shell, so on the top you can see it is a 1x3, but on the inside there is an actual 3x3. Three three. Now this base has two TC's. There's one TC, as you can see, that's connected. There's a TC in there. And then there's another TC inside. And the reason why I have this is for, it's for multiple reasons. It's mostly to defend your base from being offline uh, raided and griefed. And mostly to be defended from being griefed. Even if you're getting online raided, if raiders get the TC, it's pretty much impossible for them to get building privilege in your base. Because there's an entire thing around. Of course, this since this CC is holding up a lot, the CC should probably be more secure. Although, for the purpose of this video, I'm purely going to focus on the base, not how to secure that TC. You could build an entire flank base out of that with that TC. That's what I would recommend to have. So it's somewhat strong. Now that's the TCs. Now there's of course externals as well. And something new about this. Something I started doing recently. What I really like to do is on the external TCs. You can see that one is not connecting. You're building up the frames anyway. To extend the uh, building privilege. So what, I do, what I'm doing now is. I'm using that to place turrets. To have an extra bedroom. Where you can basically shoot raiders on the roof. And an extra windmill on top. Now you... You can build this without the bedroom or without the turret. I would really have the turret though. That's that's the main reason that's there. And with those two turrets, it's pretty much impossible to, for anyone to land a mini on the roof. Like we have the four turrets here on the corners, but we just have those and they are basically overviewing the whole roof. Like there's basically nowhere you can hide. So that's another really strong thing that I would recommend. You can apply this to any base, but... Uh, I, I've been doing it recently and I think it's really, really smart to have. So, let's just see. We have two front doors. Uh, once more, once again, like always. And let me just give you guys a tour from there. So, when we enter the base from one of the sides, we have a little airlock with shop fronts. And we have the outer layer of peaks. So you can see this base is basically exactly the same as my socket stack 3x3 when it comes to the foundations. Now there's two ways into the core or basically into the next part of the base. You can see two garage doors. We have the second. And now you can see here this is not connected. 
Then we have the tree by tree that we're walking around now. And we have the second layer of peaks above there as well. So we open this door. We're getting into our basic tree by tree. Um, this is basically where at the end of the wipe or longer into the wipe, you're going to have your like tier two, your tools, your farm, whatever. You can see I didn't even build this floor. You can basically do whatever you want there. Uh, third floor here with, with a tier three, mostly for like all your tier three or uh, tier two stuff. Go up here, we have extra storage and we will enter the peaks. First layer of peaks, classic normal peaks that, that I always had on the three by trees with bedrooms. I like to have single bedrooms here because if you put two beds in there, there's no space for any sets and these beds are protected the best. Like it's the hardest for radius to get to these beds. And so it's important that there is actually guns in there. So that's why I'm using this. Though the basis for an eight man, I would put your four most active members in there in case of a raid defense. There's two ways you can go here. You can either go up the ladder hatch, which will lead us to our main loot room. We can go to the sides here, kind of get to the second layer of peaks. In this corner, there's a triangle with a turret and a jump up. And that is where the peak beds are. As you can see one bed, two beds, and that's on each corner. So a total of eight beds with a locker. You can fit here, vending machines, whatever as well. Um, the reason there's no ladder hatch here, but there is a triangle is one. So you can have a turret and two, so you can actually peek from the beds. Now there's more than one bed in this base. So if you do die with your bedroom open and they get one of these bedrooms, perfectly fine. Doesn't really matter that much. There's no way up here for the rest. This is just completely sealed in. It's the only way into the peaks as well. So we have to go back here to get into the main loot room. Take one of the ladder hatches. And as you can see, we are now entering our main loot area. So we have batteries there, extra um, drop boxes, turrets, vending machines. And as you can see here, we have the main loot room. Now this is basically tier two stuff, tier three. It depends how loaded you are, of course, etc. Now in each of these corners is a bedroom and a jump up. So two beds. And this is basically what I call the loot room beds. Now this door should obviously be closed. You spawn here and you're basically immediately at the main loot room. You can take sets here. If you do open, um, you can see here this this door right here can be closed. So this turret always has vision, no matter if doors are closed or open. And that's why the turret is there. I know these are open. So this is basically the most risky bet to spawn in because there's not really a place you can grab loot at. Although you could put drop boxes on the walls. It's the same on all four sides. So if we go up, you can see that the bedroom is also a, a way up. So you can go here. And if we go here, we're immediately on the roof. Now if you go back down, you can see we have another bed set of bedrooms here. And there's four of, or there's eight of these as well on the shooting floor. So this is the shooting floor bedrooms. So you notice there's three beds for each person out of the group of eight that can spawn. You can spawn here, you have the shooting floor. Uh, you go around and there's a separate set of bedrooms like this facing outwards and you can spawn there and you can go up here if you want if you have lost roof access radius are on the roof you can go up one of these four rooms and you can take back roof control now um that's basically it in terms of bats shooting floor you go up the base right here we have these on all four sides um, yeah, that's basically it. So there's three beds per person, the eight, and then there's a knock another extra four for one of the four most active members of this base. If you're getting raided, you can spawn on inner peaks, you can spawn at your main loot room, or you can spawn on the shooting floor. And that's basically the, the three most important places. And we also have these flank things. Um, the external TCs are also flank bases. So what I would recommend is to have two beds in each, and that will allow you to have for one for every single person out of the group of eight to have a base or to have a spawn outside of the base as well i would really recommend to put like walls in here so if you're getting raided through the compound you can seal the compound behind the raiders through one of these flank bases so building costs of this base are again pretty expensive but if you're playing in an active eight man and you're dedicated this should be relatively easy to do to build the base, you're gonna need about 120k metal and to fully, fully build it with all the embrasures with the extra windmill towers, etc. It's about 150k, but that's it. That There's nothing more than that. That's with every single garage door, every single embrasure, everything. Now, I have to say though, your starter with inner peaks and the external TC around it with the ring of privilege, so to say, 
will cost you about two boxes of stone. So that's basically your initial amount that you need to farm to have your base to a somewhat defendable state. Now in terms of upkeep, it's pretty straightforward as well as most of the base is holed up by one TC. The core TC with all the doors is about 3 to 4k metal. Now if you place literally a door everywhere it can probably be about 5k metal. For the external TC it's about 35 to 40k metal and once again it is an expensive base I know. But with an 8 man that should be doable. Now what's most important is that you can pretty much get 13 hour upkeep on this base max with every single door placed which is very reasonable for me for me my limit is to about 10 hour upkeep if the base is less than 10 hours it's kind of like meh uh, anything above that is all right this base is 13 hours max upkeep you can get all right now that's basically all the most important things you should know about this base so let's jump into how to build it so first things first it's good to note that this base has two main tcs now, this is important to, to remember when we're building the base. Now, either way, we're going to start with a one by um, a one tall three by three. So, three squares, single door frame. You can do a double door frame as well. I like to have a window here with a, with a frame there and then a jump up here. Now, I like to have the TC right here for now. And of course, we're going to close everything off, except for the jump up. That's your one by uh, your one tall three by three starter. So at this point, you want to consider: Are you going to get griefed early, or as especially are you going to get raided early on? If you are, you want to build the external TC and the outside part of the base first. Um, either way, if you need storage and you're playing in a larger group, I would recommend to build the base up first. Now, I like to do both at the same time. Um, but originally I would probably build the base up first because it's more space for your group. So I like to do something like that. It really does not matter what you do inside of the tree by tree. Close that off, have a way up there and then it's important that on the third floor of the tree by tree, we have to jump up in the middle here. We can close everything off, except to jump up again. It's probably smartest to place a double door here, even if you have to go out door, just so it's easier and faster to close this door. If people are on your roof, it's easier to defend. So here we have our three by three starter, which is three tall at this point. Now you want to move your TC, or that's what I would do. So at this point, I would get a teammate to remove the TC and a teammate up, to place the new TC. So we del delete that one and we place it on the third floor. And we place the new TC right here. Triangle like that. Frames. So now that we moved the TC, we can actually build the second part of the base that's connected by the other TC. So what you do is you go to any side of the tree by tree, you place a triangle, another triangle, and a square. Then you remove the two triangles so they're not connected anymore. Place another square at the long side of the tree by tree. And then you go triangle, triangle, square, triangle, triangle, square, square. And then you do it again. So one square on the corners, two on the long sides. Now this right here should so look something like that. It's, it's completely the same on every side. Now you want to have your external TC. So what you do is you build triangles out. One, two, three, four, five. And then build a circle like that. And a TC right here. Of course, you close that off with a glass window. Very important. Now our base is pretty hard to get griefed, although it's still possible for Raiders to place a TC on the top. So, what you want to do now um, is place your externals up because you're probably playing in a larger group where you're building this space. And so, you're going to need large furnaces and a compound. So, place another three triangles on the side. One, two squares, and then you remove that one square place a triangle and we do one two three added so it's four squares in total and then the circle with another tc that now we repeat this on each side except for that side as we have already done that one so once we have our tcs up depending on the materials i would probably start compounding this in although we can actually build the first layer 
of walls. And the reason we need to do that soon is so that our main base cannot get griefed. Uh, the building privilege from that TC right there is only down here. And that's why Radius could potentially place a TC on the top. So even if it's just wood or even if it's just one or like a few sides, we can. it's already worth to build up. So what you can do if you want to be ultra safe is do something like that. Then you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the next frame like that. And now it's already impossible for raiders to grieve you if they early on raid you. Now you can continue with closing this off entirely, but it's not recommend or it's not really required, just so that we have the um, privilege. Now we want to get this to four floors, although. What you want to consider here is where do you want your ways to the external, to the other layer of peak downs. Um, I think the best to do is to have them here and here. So they're from the inside to the left. So that's two ways out. Like that. Now you probably have someone in your team farming wood for a compound. So easy ways what you can do here is you can either go for the gates and walls what you can do is place gates on each corner and then have walls clipped inside of the foundation like that connect them like that and this one can be a bit hard but if you go a little bit further away from the wall like that you're still fine you can do it perfectly you can do two gates you can do four gates you can do them on each side that's one way of doing it Another way of doing it if you want a bigger compound, but you're gonna need more TCs as well Is to have these as gatehouses and as this video as this video purely focuses on the base um, I'm not gonna be building the compound. You guys can do whatever you want here I would recommend to have this TC a bit More protected than this because it is holding up a big chunk of your base if not almost the entire base All right, so let's just say you have a compound at this point and large furnace is going it's important that we finish the inner peak so that we can potentially defend a raid. So let's start with the main bedrooms. I like to do a frame like this. One facing each way. And then make those into rooms. Now we have four bedrooms. Now I like to have a wall here with a floor for extra storage. Close those three off at least. Then I like to use single doors as it speaks. Two more frames and then we can close this off completely now to do the peaks what you want to do is have a triangle out from the tree by tree on each side like this and then on the corners you have a triangle like that and a triangle like that so you're basically building back to the triangle in the middle there we go that's peaks now, how do we close this off? You, as you can see, we can't really properly close this off. We need to add a half wall layer on the outside walls. We're also going to need two ladder hatches to close this off entirely. And we place a ladder hatch right here and a ladder hatch right here. Now you can, to make it a bit stronger, you could also place the ladder hatches right there. Uh, let's just go ahead and do that instead probably better because here's the door and here's the door it's not really a good combination but we have them like that and then like that so they're perfectly mirrored now you can close ha this whole roof off now there we go and then of course we're going to need ladder hatches and we're going to need doors to close the base off entirely. You probably noticed that the base is pretty weak from the top. A potential scrap heli could land here, raid this one ladder hatch, go down here, have control over peaks and bedrooms, and continue blowing your tree hatchery all the way down here, which is only three floors. So to make the ladder hatch part a bit stronger, you need to place two walls like this. Then you need to place two frames. You need to put doors on those frames. And we need frames here as well. So we're gonna need quite a lot of doors. But the upside is that this part of the base is only up for a very small amount of time. And it's just so that raiders don't instantly see or get access to the ladder hatches. It looks really weird, but it's just so that they 
cannot blow the ladder edge straight up and, and get a pretty pretty easy control over your base. Now for this, you can decide to completely uh, low wall this off. I would recommend that against splash damage. Um, so that's fine now. And now we can start and go ahead and build the outer layer of peaks up. Now we're going to want to see where do we want our front door. I would recommend having the front door um, not on the main part of the TC. So like this. And then we can wall the rest off. At least for the first layer. Now for the front door you can do anything. But what you can. What I like to do is just do two double frames. And shop fronts in the middle. Or on the side to me. And the door there. Same on the other side. Now you're going to want to build up the walls. You do this but at the doors. You build it up from the first layer that we already built. We have one, two, three layers up. Now you don't need to build four layers up just yet. So let's do the outer peaks quick here. Um, we have the windows on the corners. So like that. Then we have two triangles on each side of those. And then on the middle part we just have the peaks like this. It's just so that you could also do the other way, but Raiders will know there's peaks because they can see that little thingy going out of the wall. Um, and they know that if they blow up there, they get control over the peaks. So I would recommend to just build it like that. Now you repeat that and you do that on all sides. All right. So once we have peaks, um, it's probably this, this part is a bit tough, but you need to go outside, place twig and then put a triangle like that. Then remove the twig. So we have a triangle like that. Now the next triangle needs to face that way. It's the other one is facing that way. That's way it's completely symmetrical on all sides. Now, it's not really required. It just looks better. For me it's kind of important. As you can see we have one facing that way. One facing that way. The next one will face this way again. So you do that on all four sides. Alright. So once we have the triangle on all four sides. You can go ahead and close the peaks off. Except for the square on the corner where the triangle is. There we go. Now you want to do t four walls or you want to just close this part in. Do half walls here and then seal the whole room off. Like that. Now you do that on all four sides. So one more time. Half walls. And don't worry about these walls facing the soft side in. Okay, once you're done with that, these are the bedrooms, by the way. Um, the reason what you want or what you want to do as well is place frames on the corners. The idea is that there's a bed here and you can just jump down instead of using a ladder hatch because the ladder hatches to defend from from above is kind of tough. Or I would say I don't really have a good experience with that. So I'm starting to use these kind of triangle jump ups. It's one door less as there's no ladder hatch here, although it is definitely stronger because you can get more angles. So what you can do, for example, is you can angle like that from your bed now these are not the main beds so it doesn't matter if they do get access to these and if you accidentally have a door open and you die so that's fine so that's eight beds on all the corners which is the perfect amount for these for this base of people so we do half walls here i don't know what i did here but i messed up the wall sorry about that and then we place a full wall on top of those half walls Once you're done with that, you want to layer off or align everything the same height. So half us on the corners again. And then once you're done with that, you want to, you can actually go ahead and seal everything off. Except you want to keep these open right there. Let me just show you here. This one can be closed, but that one open and it looks easier to see from the top. Uh, in a second. So this one. And that one. So like. This is what you should have. Actually I'm stupid. That one should be gone. There you go. This is what you should have. Now to close it off. You can put triangles here. 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 And here. And then just go from out to in. So. Stability messes it up. You can't place things in here, but 
you should be able to do this. Alright, so to finish this off, what you want to do is place walls like that. Door frame like that. And then seal that off. And you want to have it symmetrical, so door frame like that. And then the same on the other side, so like that. Now, the reason why there's four like this is because I think it's very important that you have multiple ways up and down to your roof. It's very, very important. So, of course, you close these off. Um, since they are the roof right now, I would put double doors here. But on the longer run, this is not going to be your roof and we're going to put garage doors there. So, like that. So, our base is pretty secure now. We have double layer of peaks and we have another extra floor. Now this extra floor that we created here, which is one floor from the top, is going to be our main loot room. Place the door frame here, place the door frame here, and close that off with walls. Now whatever that, whatever you want to do in here, it's completely up to you. This is the main loot room, so I like to have something like that. Although, once again, you can do whatever you want. You can have like floors like this. Floors like this. can have something like that as your main loot room now since the main loot room I would probably just put doors up but yeah so next is half walls here and here wall in the middle half wall there as well and then floors you want to do that on each side and these doors can now be either removed or replaced with garage doors now all of them even these so one more time Four, full wall floors and then half walls on the side. You can put the frames as well. These are basically um, extra loot rooms. Alright, so you notice there's a little weird kind of jump up here. Um, so what you can you what you can do um, you can have this completely sealed off or you can have extra drop chests under there let's just do that and have a turret there maybe you can also leave that open and have extra storage but so close that off turret right there and it looks like we forgot a wall here so we need to have that wall there so it's complete off so the way down is through these ladder hatches it's also the way up to the main loot room get into the peaks you need to go down or you need to spawn in your bedroom out here and then go down here right now at this point we can start with our shooting floor so we want to have these two parts we don't want to have anything then we want to have a square triangle 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 square so that's how the corner should look so square triangle 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 square and then we do that all around now for these we're gonna put roofs like this and that's basically the footprint of the shooting floor now we can have frames here with windows and then we need the single doors on the corners remember to put them on the right side from the inside and then we can put our windows you can also put windows on top of these now I want to have double doors here 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 and here and that all the way around and I'll show you guys from the top like that. Now we can already secure the outer layer or put roofs on top, floors. But you want to have a floor frame in the middle here. And you want to do that on each side. Like that. Now I want to have walls here with frames. And with floors on top. Same on the other side. This is an extra extra bedrooms for on the shooting floor now we can close put another frame here 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 and here right here we can have another bedroom but i want to face it outwards so like that and then we have the same on the other side as well close that off with two frames here and two frames here now we can close that off too and this as well and this as well Like that. 
uh, put the door, put doors up, etc. You name it. Um, where do you want your uh, ladder hatches? You can have two on the corners like that. Now, there's one thing that you want to consider in this space, because it's one floor to the loot room right now, to the main loot room. So, what I like to do is have this half wall all the way to the top. So, if you're getting top down, they uh, need to go through a bunch of more layers. Of course, this will eventually be HGRAM, or this should be HGRAM. But it's it makes the base weaker. So, in case you want to do that, it's very easy. You just not remove that wall, but you don't place a frame there. You place walls like that. And preferably half walls if you still can. And this pathway right here in the middle is just turning into another bedroom. So two bedrooms. You go around way in. Go around way in. Go around bedroom bedroom. So that's the only difference. Now you can't really walk through the center anymore of the shooting floor. But that's alright with me. I would fully honeycomb this. But you can place, you can make the half walls metal, as they're just there to avoid splash damage. Now the next floor on top, I would once again make armored again, and that way it's at least 32 rockets to go straight down, or 16 C4. And one more time, we half wall it. And then on the top, it's another extra uh, four C4 or eight rockets to go to the top. Now, we already placed the frames for the ladder edge so we can close the rest of the roof up as well. Now, at this point, you probably want to place the ladder hatches. I would face them towards the garage door because you're going to go come out of here and then go here to go up. So it's the most convenient. And then for the triangle ones, I would recommend to place them, although you can also you don't have to, but it's pretty much like the only way you're gonna get up there. So, I would place them straight up. Actually, uh, you cannot make this jump. Pretty sure you can't make this jump. Like that. Now for the roof, uh, the best thing to start with is to put these windows on each side. And this is for roof control. In case raiders land on your roof, you can pick them from four different places. You have full uh, view over the roof. Now, uh, what you want to do here is place two triangle roofs like that. And then close off the roof. But you need to place those two first, like that. Now, to finish that off, you want to put two more windows. And now there's no way for anyone to get in here. It's quite open, so you're going to need embrasures. But that's basically it. So you do that on all four sides. So once you've done that, you want to continue with the roofs and you want to have big roofs here, or I call them full roofs, connecting to the window things we just built. And then the rest, we want to do triangle roofs. And as you can see, if we put two triangles there, there's an there's open gap. And that's why you put another triangle like here and another one like here. Now, this one is hard to place. So what you can do instead is just go down into the shooting floor and place these so what you can do is you can align yourself with the furthest triangle out place that one and then do the same on the other one as you can see we have this now we need to place them here as well but you can do that from up here like that we do that on the other side as well now that is pretty much it it's a pretty high demand these days that uh, people asking me about windmills and electricity so i would put windmills up on these and I have just four windmill towers, which is more than enough for more than enough turrets and lights, whatever the hell you want in your base. Now that is pretty much it for the base. Now of course you can see there's missing embrasures and all that stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place that now. So to finish things off, there's a lot of things you can do to make your space a bit stronger. It's to build the frames up from the external TCs. Now on this one, I would also recommend still do it just for the looks. So it looks exactly the same. Maybe some raiders won't realize that this TC is actually connected. Another upgrade you can do, which is to make all of these into windmill towers. Now, I recently started doing something to my bases with the external TCs. And I'll show you what. If we built this up and we built it one taller. Put a floor, 
half wall by the opening towards that side. Now here we put a turret and we put a turret facing towards the base, of course, as far as we can. There's two things you can do above here. You can either make a window with a room and a bed in here with maybe like a vending machine, a locker and two small boxes. For example, you can do anything. You can also put two beds in there, but then there's no space for loot. Now you can close that off, fill that up and you have basically a respawn. Now you can do that on the other side as well. Now since this part is already connected, um, I wouldn't do it on all four sides because the frames do definitely make the base a lot more expensive. All right, that was it for this one. I hope you guys can appreciate the base and I hope it can be useful to some of you. Now, I'm really curious if you do defend a raid in this base, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you haven't joined my Discord server, I would really recommend you to join it. I'm doing weekly giveaways, free skins you can win for Rust. And besides that, there's just a bunch of awesome people to chat with. Thank you all for watching. If you like the base, make sure to leave a like. I do also aim on releasing a solo duo trio base very soon. So I hope you guys are ready for that. But take care of yourselves and I'll see you all in the next video.